All right, good morning, everyone. We're gonna get right into these stock charts, uh, do some technical analysis, uh, and show you guys what I'm seeing this morning. So, just to set the, the video up, um, what happened is we've got, we had a gap up today after a, a uh, pretty, pretty impulsive sell-off yesterday. Uh, and so I wanna talk through that real quick, uh, just so everyone kinda understands um, how to how to really read what's what, what we have this morning for one uh, one thing is that you really all usually want to put a higher weighting put put a heavier weighting on price action that takes place during the regular market session um, and and usually and then you know I typically I put price action that takes place earlier in the day than later in the day you can't I mean Regular session is more important than what happens outside of the regular session. Uh, and, and usually I, I give a little more uh, weighting towards earlier in the day than later in the day. And that's just how I approach it. Now, why is that? That's because institutional money. You want to be on the side of institutional money. You want to really, when you're looking at charts, you're looking for what is the, what are the institutions doing? Um, when the institutions make moves, they move the market. When they're not making a move, and they're just, you know, doing nothing. Then you can have money flows and, you know, 401k flows and kind of Main Street move the market um, over time. You know, typically they're not they're going to grind the market higher over time. That's that's basically what they do. Uh, the money flows on Main Street are all on the buy side, and they're all you know it's all long money for the most part. Um, <clears throat> show me a 401k that makes money when the market sells off. You know, I've never seen it. Um, now, the um, so you want to you want to put a heavier weighting on what happens during the regular session. So this morning we had a gap up, and and this is just a lesson in how to read this chart. Um, you, this morning we gapped up, and Q's basically gapped up here to 279. That's where we opened at, and uh, well actually sorry. That's not exactly where we opened. We opened right here at 277.81. And so far today, there's been, you know, it's kind of sideways. It's early in the morning, but I, I'm seeing more selling in the regular session. So the move up came in the futures market, the thinly traded futures market that, you know, is not always, it's not large institutional money uh, playing in the futures market. And so that's where the move up came, and then since the market's been open, we've we've kind of been doing this drift lower. So that is really what you want to understand. The you know regular session price action has been down, uh, and then the thinly traded futures is where we got the up move. So put heavier weighting on the regular price, uh, the regular session, and the price action that we see. Um, we don't. I don't know where that's going to be today. On Qs, we are kind of in the middle of these ranges that I've pointed out where we've got this 280, 40, and 275 at the lower end. Yesterday, we went, you know, end to end, you know, touched the ranges on both sides. So uh, today we're in the middle. There's really nothing to do, uh, in, at least from, from my perspective. There's no moves to make while you're in the middle of the range. So um, at least on, on the triple Qs. All right, SPY, yeah, SPY recovered this trend line, this resistance line that I have. Um, but, you know, we've sliced through it yesterday and then bounced back above it today. Uh, so we're probably going to need to just get rid of this one and sit and mark the uh, the top of the range up here at about 342.50 as, as kind of where we're at. So I think we're probably, it's very similar, I believe, to the Qs as we're in the middle of the range slightly towards the higher end but basically in the middle middle of the range so nothing to do really on this either as of right now okay moving on let's look at IWM here so IWM recovered so far looks like it has recovered this resistance line at 159.60 um, that's a big resistance line top of the range uh, something to watch for to see if we actually get a daily close up here I suspect we don't, but we'll have to see. Um, and you can see here on the daily chart for IWM, 
we're pretty much right there at it. Yesterday we popped above it and sold off, and today they're they're back above it. So, yeah, you know, I'm not exactly sure what to read from that. Uh, I suspect it won't close above it. It'll sell off and close below that level. But uh, you know, they could they could break back above. Now, if it does close back above here, that's pretty bullish uh, in in for IWM. Because it failed yesterday, had the false breakout yesterday, and so it closed back above here. Tells me that IWM wants to go a little bit higher. Gold continues to you know look weak in general. It's downtrending, still downtrending, um, and you know it's in a in in to put this in context, it's in a larger bull market. So gold is in a bull market. It just looks to me like it's coming in for a test of the trend line for that bull market. So <clears throat> you can see I've got all kinds of lines as I've been charting gold over the past years. And I see in base, you know, in general, the uptrend line right here on gold. And I think we're coming down into that trend line. Whether that falls at 1820 or 30, uh, I think we're gonna get a tag of the 1790 level. And it continues to look like we're gonna do that. You can see we're just making lower highs and lower lows. So. One more uh, push down and we'll be right in that 1790 area. At that point, I'm gonna start to look for longs most likely on uh, gold mining stocks. The dollar, it's just hanging in here, holding support right here, just kind of chopping through, chopping around, getting a little volatile right in this area as it's a battleground, but it's still holding support, uh, continues to make its way higher, making higher lows and higher highs. So again, looking at 95, 50, 95, 60 as the target for that. PAAS continues to look weak. Um, and this to me looks like we're making our the next leg down uh, in this downtrend. So PAAS broke its uptrend right back here. This is your uptrend for 2020. We broke and it's just drifted sideways and now it's starting to resolve to the downside. So that's, you know, the the down move is the corrective move or what's expected after you break an uptrend. And this is the uptrend. You consolidate sideways for a while. You can see we had this big consolidation range uh, and we're starting to break down. You know, we broke below it, recovered it, starting to break down again. So if we can close down in this area, I think that sets us in motion to start to work its way down towards this 26 target. XLV, uh, this one just chopping around, you know, there's been some volatility the last couple days with, uh, you know, headlines and things flying around. But today, so today we gapped up and kind of moving a little bit higher, but still below resistance. So you can see here, this flag is, is creating the next level of resistance. And we're just kind of walking up, continue to tag it, but aren't, we're not able to recover it. So continues to hold. Um, so I expect this to, you know, start to work its way down towards 97. That's what I'm looking for. Um, you know, you, we, we hit the first level of support. We we're getting the reaction. And now if you come back down into that level about 101, then it'll probably break and, you know, or consolidate a little bit more and then, and then break down to 97. Financial is back above resistance here at 2470. Um, get you know moved down yesterday gapped up today and and actually moved up you know and and we're holding up here so uh, that's relative strength uh, in the financials to see them sell off and then just for the gap up and they buy it up uh, right at the market open so uh, relative strength there in the financials uh, I think a lot of that move with the financials has to do with the bond market something to look at here in the BND, we continue to see bonds are selling off, which which means interest rates are rising, uh, and banks like higher interest rates. So, <clears throat> as interest rates rise, the the banks, uh, I think that's the trade that's kind of happening right now is bonds are selling off, and and they're buying the banks uh, as interest rates rise. DraftKings, so this one's working out nicely um, since it broke. Um, I've adjusted my line slightly. I was kind of playing with it. Um, I had it, previously I had it right here and where we were just back testing. Uh, and you know, that, that makes sense as well. But you, you could redraw it as this bearish rising wedge if you wanted to, um, which does line up 
with about right there if I can get the line to actually go need a shorter line um, <clears throat> it's about right yeah right about there there's a bearish rising wedge and so we broke and that's the point the 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 bearish pattern broke to the downside and so you know I, I think there's continued uh, there's going to be continued selling pressure in this thing. It's gap down today, to, so to see it start to move up um, after a big gap down, that's expected and, and nothing out of the normal. Uh, but it's not at support. There's no there's no support here. So this is just intraday buyers buying it up, uh, day trading and things like that. Uh, but I expect that whatever bid that they catch here, that this thing catches, it will sell off. Um, you know, it could fill the gap, uh, but I think we're still going to work our way down towards about this 49.20 area is really the kind of the, the cleanest target I can make uh, for the near term target. And then if it breaks that, then we've got this 40, it's about 43.70, 44, something like that. Uh, and that's probably the end of the trade for that one. So far, since it broke, this thing's down about 14% uh, in just a couple days. So I expect that that down, that selling pressure to continue. Tesla still looks weak, um, and it's not able to really recover. Uh, yesterday sold off. Today they ta you know today it bounced up and hit resistance again, overshot it just briefly, and then has you know ha has failed. Um, and so we're still below resistance. This trend line right here at 420.18 is, is still holding, or sorry, it's about 420.40. Um, it's a $400 stock, so within you can be within pennies. It's, it, you know, uh, and still holding. So I think that we continue to, you know, work our way lower. Um, I'm looking for couple levels on this one that I'm really looking for is is down here. I'm looking for us to run down and start to fill these gaps down here. Uh, and so ultimately I'm looking for a drop of about 40%, 45% and um, to ultimately to about 220, about we'll call it 225. Look at Philip Morris rip to the upside. So I, I I closed my position yesterday right before the big sell-off came. I saw the signs of that sell-off in um, XLK. And so I closed that Philip Morris position. But then when they opened it this morning, it looked like it was opening higher than the previous uh, high. So I jumped right back in. So gave up a little bit. But again, I closed it right before the sell-off. Um, so I, you know, pretty much got out of it, you know, right up around here and just got right back in. Um, so I think I gave up maybe a five to 10 cents worth of potential profit, but so far everything's looking good. So again, these, these patterns that they, these patterns work and they work when nobody else is looking. So typically you're looking for signs to buy something when nobody wants it. And then as it starts to, you know, you start to get the moves that you're expecting, that's when you start to look for areas to start taking profit. Most people, you know, want to buy the these things when they start ripping higher. That's when they want to jump in and buy. And I'm usually looking to sell, sell to those people for the most part. And they can ride the, you know, they can ride the last of the momentum wave. Uh, and I typically, uh, you know, I'm usually grabbing, you know, the beginning of the momentum wave and, <clears throat> And, um, you know, I'll ride the, some of my trade, you know, I'll let it run, but, uh, I like to lock in profits. I want the guaranteed win. So I look for pro taking profit and then, um, you know, letting a smaller portion of the trade, you know, can ride the momentum. Uh, so, so far this is good. Philip Morris looks good. Um, and where are we going? Well, you know, we're starting to break above this this resistance right here. So I think we're heading up to 90 bucks uh, in Philip Morris. And that's the target for now. Zoom looks like it's tapped out. Looks like the energy, the momentum is just flatlined now. Um, we have negative divergence in Zoom and the price has not really, you know, we haven't broke yet, but it looks like it's gonna go any day. So 
<clears throat> I'm just waiting for that break. Uh, until I get that break, I'm not really interested. But if there's a nice impulsive breakdown, uh, that should set the uh, momentum, you know, to the downside. So it's e you know it's either consolidating and building some more energy for another pop higher, or uh, it's about to break. Until I see some sort of <clears throat> trigger event, then we'll just continue to watch it. But clean negative divergences tell me that it's going to break to the downside. All right, PHM, and then um, this one is um, continues to grind below the trend line. It's just doing this kind of back test channel where it's just working its way higher right below the, the major trend, uh, but clean negative divergence are in play on the daily. So if we pop to a new high today, getting above this 48 level, uh, and we're almost there, then that's gonna be another divergent high where price is making a, a new higher high and momentum will have made a lower low. So clean negative divergence tell me that any of those divergent high prices, especially if it's back testing right at that trend line, are objective areas to add to a short position or take a short position. So I'll be looking to probably add to this uh, on a back test uh, if it could just pop right up into that uh, into that trend line um, right around right now it's sitting at about 40 about 49 bucks uh, if we get a pop up into 49 today that'd be the area I'd be looking to add to a short position Carvana looks good uh, still short this one looking you know we're below trend so if you look at the daily there's your, your trend line on Carvana we broke here's your break of trend right there popped up i think this was on earnings or some sort of news event but popped up did some back testing and now we're starting to to you know resolve to the downside and break so i think that if you look at the hourly here we broke the, that this little minor trend not a lot of reactions here i just marked it out it's nothing that i'm basically trading off of but i want to see if we get a couple more reactions but we broke below it yesterday Today they popped up, popped up it, or popped it above it, and now it's starting to fade. So, again, look at the price action and what's happening on this when we opened. The price action yesterday during regular market hours was heavy selling. Then in the futures they gap it up, and then the market, the regular session market, they start selling again. So, you want to watch for what's happening when the institutions can move their money around. And right now I see institutional selling of Carvana. All right, I'm gonna wrap up here. Just covered some of these trade ideas that I've been outlining, uh, general stock market review. Um, I know several of you liked that, that video I did where I covered uh, the subscriber picks and I'll try to do that more often. I can't do it um, you know, all the time because uh, I mean, I just put out a lot. It takes a lot of time to put these videos together um, if I'm going to do multiple market cap videos. So I'll try to do it maybe once a week or once every other week. Uh, so just think about stocks you want me to look at and um, I'll ask for uh, some options and put together a video here. Um, anyways, thanks guys. Appreciate it. Catch you on the next one.